going on, my Super Sandwiches? I'm still here, and long time no see, but we're back with some Duel Links content. Now, before I start, two things as always. I feel like I start my videos always off like this. Number one, if you're participating in the Duel Carnival, what I want you to do is comment, are you Team Dragon or Team Spellcaster? Obviously, you know I'm going to represent for Team Dragon over here, with blue eyes and red eyes being amongst my favorite dragons from the series. So, that's my team. What team are you on? Punch the mic. What team are you on? Let me know in the comment section below. And while you're at it, make sure you leave a like right below if you want to see more Duel Links content. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump in. Now, to kind of briefly summarize what the Duel Carnival actually is. So, essentially, it's a new event which features PvP. Not against bots and, and CPU, but actual other players. You choose a team, and then after a certain amount of wins, uh, they calculate the points, and then you either get like 20 chests or like 30 chests, something like that. I don't remember. Uh, basically, you, you get the in game content. Now, if you get enough points, you get uh, Esper Robo unlocked finally, along with Jinzo, who's finally in the game, uh, as well as other cards like Monster. <coughs> Monster Reborn, Reborn, not regular Monster Reborn, but Monster Reborn, Reborn, which is a different card. Uh, to those who have no idea what that is, essentially it is, um, you, uh, let's set this, set that. You you choose three monsters from your graveyard, and then your opponent chooses which one you special summon. You can only use it once per turn as well. So that's Monster Reborn, Reborn. It's not like Monster Reborn, but at least it's, it's another way to special summon in the game. So, uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do like maybe two or three duels against uh, the Spellcaster team over here. And I decided to just run my, my Exodia deck because, well, uh, I feel like the Exodia deck that I'm running right now kind of counters a lot of what potential decks I've been coming across. And with everybody using such a different variety of decks here, you can find meta stuff in here, you can find uh, non-meta stuff. I figured it's a good balance in, in between. Out of all the decks I've been using so far, this has been working out the best. Um, so let's see how this goes. Now, right off the bat, I'm not off to a good start because, uh, number one, he's very, very timid. And the one flaw with this deck is if they're not attacking you, you're just kind of sitting there waiting for something to happen, which could be a really, really boring tool. But the second he starts attacking, it's going to be pretty much uh, one-sided because I got a lot of protection, like Wall Disruption right now and Powerful Rebirth to get uh, Mr. of the Afterlife back on the field if I really have to. Oh, like that. Like that. I feel like he's going to probably sacrifice that for something. Um, watch, him be using, uh, watch him be using Jinzo here. So what I'm gonna actually do is the second he destroys uh, my mystery like that, because uh, I'm sure he's gonna tribute the second he can. I'm actually gonna bring him right back because I can use him multiple times. So unlike Legion, I think Legion uh, the Jester Clown, uh, you can only do once per turn, so you don't want to do that one. So you know, not yet, not yet. Let's actually activate the effect first. So let's get the right arm or left arm, excuse me, left arm. And can I activate it now, or is he gonna go for the tribute first? Maybe I should have activated it immediately right now because if he tributes right now, I can't pull Jinzo out, and this is gonna be a really interesting duel. All right, that's, that's perfect. Sound Magician, okay, I got you. Can I counter that? There we go. We're gonna go ahead and counter that by bringing the mystery right back down. There we go. Set him into defense mode, and this kind of sucks because, well, uh, good news is he might not attack because he might be afraid of me getting another Exodia piece. But bad news is I'm about to have an empty field, and he's gonna have a full field here in a second. So what I'm gonna actually do is, is I'm gonna wait for. Uh, let's see. Can you? Do you need level up for this? No. So it needs five spell counters to evolve, essentially. I'm going to save my wall of disruption for as long as possible. Uh, yep, see, there it is. I'm going to save my wall of disruption. Actually, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't. Because what I could do here is, is I can just wall of disruption right now and kill his uh, Silent Magician. With I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that, just in case. Because I'd rather not have to deal with a 3500 attack monster, which is going to be a problem here in a second. So go ahead. Attack me. I dare you. I, I want you to attack me. Go ahead. Do your best. Do your best. Oh, he's falling right for it. He's going right for the bait. Going right for the bait. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Look at that. Full fury. Full fury all zeroed out right now. All right. All right. All right. You know what? I'm actually getting offensive with this deck. Why not? Because I I rarely I use it to attack. I mostly just use it to get my Exodia pieces out. So we'll see how this works. By the way, if you're watching this video, let's go for 2,500 likes of this. Again, uh, the like ratio or the like system lets me know that you guys enjoy this content and it makes me do more. I'm going to set this double summon down just to psych him out like that. And let's go and attack. You know what? Let's attack everything. We'll attack you. One down. And no, I think that's game, actually. That's game! <laughs> I beat him without Exodia. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. See, wall of disruption to me. I'm sorry. I've had so many debates with my friends in the last couple of, uh, of, of months, really. What's better, mirror wall or wall of disruption? And I'm sorry. Wall of disruption is just a better card. Mirror Wall can be useful in certain situations, like if you go against like Ancient Gear Golems, for example, which no one really uses anymore. Um, but but cards like that, it kind of stop you from. Oh, we still lost! Come on, come on, bro! I pulled my weight. Where are you guys at? Where's the other team at? Whatever. 
this is a really fun event about it. Konami, I, I, I really appreciate the event that you guys put together for this one. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chests instead of like 15. Um, back to what I was saying. Wall disruption is cool because it stays like that for the entire, like the rest of the duel that the monsters are on the field. They're basically, you know, they take the hit either 800, 1600, or 2400 depending on how many monsters are on the field present. Mirror wall, like if you take that hit and then you can't pay 2000 life points the next turn, like that's it. Like, they go back to normal. And because of that, I'm team wall disruption. So also in the comment section below, let me know which uh, card you think is personally better from your own personal experience. Wall disruption or mirror wall. And honestly, if it was up to me, I would honestly limit them, or even semi-limit them, because I feel like they are kind of powerful, especially for this meta. So, yeah. Okay, let's see what we got. So, I got another emissary. I got two pieces in my hand already. I'm going to try to finish this duel off with uh, a... Actually, this might be a for-hire deck. I think he's, for, he's using for-hire, which is the new meta. <laughs> they get rid of Sylvans, basically, with the most recent nerf, and then they add for-hires. It's like, what's the point? <sighs> another one I just absolutely cannot stand is Mass Change. I'm sorry, Mass Change... It, what did I say?! It's like I actually can see it coming. <sighs> oh, this is gonna be awful. So this, I'm not gonna win this one. I am not going to win this one. So and I'm still learning all about the for hires. Uh, I'm, I'm still learning all about them. So this is gonna be really, really tricky. Essentially, it's like they're, they're summoning, they're destroying stuff. At the, at the same, it's basically Sylvan 2.0, but better. If that makes sense. And some of you might disagree with me on that one, but I'm sorry. I think for hires are way better than Sylvans. Okay. Well, let's see how this works out. This is already. This is the first turn, man. First turn! You kidding me? Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just set this bad boy down. Which one do we have? Let's see. As long as he doesn't have the one that lets you destroy... Um, well, I think uh, the, the effects only activate when they're actually summoned, isn't it? So I'm gonna go ahead and set this one. That way he can't attack me just quite yet. I mean, I guess the big difference between for hires is, is they're a little bit weaker. But again, there's stuff to make up for the weakness. And on top of that, they got that big strong one that has like 2400 attack. I forgot what it's called. It starts with a D, I think. Uh, that one, not only can you only attack that one on the field, but uh, <laughs> it's got quite a high attack. Everything else is just kind of like various whether or not they summon stuff on the field, but this is about to get interesting. Oh, okay, he's gonna be a little bit timid. Okay, that's fine. I'll take that as a perfect advantage. So I'm gonna get four pieces out now this way. And if I pull Sangin, if I pull Sangin or the head, I won. Like, I, that's it. For what? For hire for what? For hire these nuts. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. So let's see how this works out. What you got for me? What you got for me? I feel like he knows which situation he's in right now. Him summoning all him, he or she, not sure what it is. He or she, whoever the other player is, kind of screwed up by not. Ooh. I will save that for a rainy day. I will save that for a rainy day. The reason why I run needle sealing is if I come to situations where someone's very, very defensive, I can flip over all my monsters and then uh, activate needle sealing and then clear out my entire field and get all my exotic pieces immediately. I only have one in the deck, so I don't really rely on it, but in situations like this, it could actually work out really, really well. In fact, if I get Sangin out, let's see which one is this? There, we Dina. We're gonna go ahead and just say, nah, none of that. None of that, just clear it all out. Clear out all the face-up cards. It, it's low-key kind of clutch. It is low-key kind of clutch. What did he just do? He did, just, he did something that I, I don't know, didn't know he could do. What did he just do? What did you just do? Oh, he, he deactivated my needle ceiling. Never mind. <laughs> Yo, I had my I had my chest out and everything. I was like, yeah, I got this. This is gonna be an easy victory. And then and then that happened. That's cool, I guess. Okay, you know what? I'm still gonna activate uh, this one right here. Because you can't How many times can you activate your your ability? Oh, only once. I think it's only once per turn, something like that. I I'm still kinda like learning about the the fur hire meta. I've seen a couple of videos. Big shout out to Shady. I say, I saw his video when it, when it first came out. Uh, and I, I fought a couple, so I don't really know much about them. But I gotta say, I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan of them. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and set this double summon down again for bait. That way he thinks I have, he or she, thinks that I have another um, wall disruption down. Uh, just in case, because I'm sure we're gonna see another Dino here in a second. You know, the other funny thing is, is, is they just nerfed Sylvans. Like I said at the beginning of the video, they nerfed Sylvans and they literally gave us this. So it's like, how long of this do we have to go through before they nerf this as well? Uh, I mean, honestly, Konami at this point, he might as well even give us Monster Reborn. Because I saw the CPU in the DD Tower the other day. They were using Monster Reborn in almost every single deck. Not the first time I saw it in this game, but like, he might as well start giving us cards like this, especially since we, since we just got Jinzo as well, which I'm really excited about. Okay. See, what sucks here is, is because I have to be defensive now. Oh, I'm just going to get the pieces naturally this way, aren't I? Mm, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. We're going to play it safe here. This might be kind of boring here in a second. Unless he has something that he can count. Maybe I shouldn't have uh, wall disrupted his Dyna. 
I was playing it safe because if I didn't do it, okay, so he just ended it. I might get the head this way actually. I might just get the head this way, and it might work out as well. So it, maybe, maybe the other player is waiting for the proper cards to come into into their hand, and it's gonna give me enough room to go through mine. I have 15 cards left. So I have a one in 15 chance of pulling the head right now, and once I have the head, that's it. It's game over. It's GG. So we'll see how this works out. Ooh, what are you gonna do with that? So you're gonna okay. So you're gonna take my monster here. Okay, that's interesting. You know, if you, if you tribute it, I still get the effect. You know that, right? I don't think he realizes that. He or she. Realize, I don't think they realize that. What you got for me? They're going to tribute. Or are they going to go for the attack? They're going for the attack. They, I, they, I guess they, they... You know what? This is beautiful. This is exactly what I want. Because this will allow me to set uh, my Crystal Seer here in a second. Alright, fine. I mean, I can't really use the other pieces anymore. Because uh, I basically have the entire set now in my hand. With the exception of the head. There we go. Thin my deck out just a little bit more. Um, Exodia is coming out next turn. If Exodia does not come out within the next two turns, I, I deserve to lose at this point. Because, I mean, I have Crystal Seer that is going to get su summoned here. Uh, I'm going to get nothing from Legion. Uh, except for a, a block, I guess. Exodia head! Ah, a mystery. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just set... We're going to set you back into defense mode. Here we go. I mean, this deck can be boring in situations like this, but like I said, the whole point of running Exodia, especially in Duel Links, because of how the mana is, you want to stall for time as much as possible. And if you give your opponent any opportunity to attack, especially with how the man literally summoned so many cards in the first turn, um, you know, you, you got to be as protective as possible. Otherwise, it's, you're not going to get that far with this deck. But again, from when I used this deck originally a couple of a weeks ago, it still works pretty well. Which one is this? You can target one monster at your hand... Okay, that's cool, I guess. That's fine. I guess we're not using... I guess we're not going to go for Crystal Seer in this. That's fine. That's fine. I, I don't want Crystal Seer anyways. Okay, the good news is... Ooh, actually, bad news. I basically have... I gotta draw Sangin here. Come on. I have a four-card... Four-card chance. Sangin. Well, you know what? Wall Disruption works really, really well, too. So we're going to go ahead and set that. This is about to get real boring again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is, again... This is the bad side of this deck. It's not the best deck when it comes down to, you know, just going right in and just powering through uh, battles, but whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best here in a second. Come on. Come on. It's already over. It's already pretty much over. You know, I might not even... I might not even uh, wall of disruption this player here because I don't want them to be stuck with zero attack. So go ahead and do your thing. At this point, they should know I have four pieces because I'm not, I'm not getting anything else out of my deck. So go ahead and attack me. Because I can take 1,600 damage. I can definitely take 1,600 damage. And if I really need to, I'll wall disrupt here probably the next turn or so. Because I'm not surviving another turn if I have to take hits like that. Okay. Come on, man. You know what? Actually, fine, fine, fine. You know, I'm meant to lose this duel right now. Because look at this. I have, again, I have three Sangins in my deck. And then the head. So there's other, all these other cards I could potentially be drawing right now that I'm just not getting. Or those, those four is what I'm about to get. Out of everything else I could be potentially drawing. That's what I meant to say. So it kind of sucks. So go into go into your battle phase. All right, I'm going to activate my. Not yet. We're just going to activate uh, Windstorm here, and buy myself a quick turn. And let's see how this goes. They got something to counter with, don't they? Oh, you know what? It's fine. That's fine because now I can activate this. I'm just gonna. I mean, you forced my hand. You made me do this. Unless they have another defense against that, in which case I lose. Is that it? Yes. It's like, go ahead, cancel out my Windstorm Etika. That's fine. Fine, that's fine. That's that's fine and dandy. Hit me for zero. You know be funny if they're really petty, if they attack me with all three monsters. Exodia head! Come on! Are you kidding me right now? Dude, like seriously, there is <laughs> I have like a like I, I like what a 40% chance to win in the next turn, which is not the highest uh, percentage, but still like either I draw Sangins, which I have three, or the head, and that's it, it's game over. But like, come on. Okay, the question is, is, is what is the other player going to do now? Play defensive, I guess. And basically just duel until you run out of cards. The other player has 6, I have 10. Just give me the head. Now we get the Sangin, of course. Now we get the Sangin. And see, in this situation, it would have been fantastic to actually have um, Needle Sealing. Because I could have just flipped uh, or summoned Sangin, activated Needle Sealing, which destroys all face-up monsters on the field if you have 4 or more. Um, and then that would have activated his effect and allowed me to get the head in my hand. Just, just give me the head. Just give me the head. Of course. Now I get all the Sangins. All of them. 
All of them. And I'm mad they were two. They were next to each other too. I guarantee you, my next card I draw is gonna be Sangin. Watch, watch. It's gonna happen. It is about to happen. Wow, we got a full field here. Just give me the head. Like I, I won this duel. There's no way in hell they're coming back. No, it's a mystery, dude. You gotta be kidding me. Again, this is one of the weaknesses with the deck. I mean, you're not always gonna draw. I mean, you're jumping with 25 cards. Number one, what is this? Beast Rising. Uh. Okay, I mean that doesn't really, that doesn't really do anything to me. Actually, it does because uh, if you attack Sangin, like I, I've already won. If you attack Sangin, I've already won. If he somehow manages to like increase his attack all the way up, and um, what are you doing here? And I, and does piercing damage in some way? I've lost because I only have 2,500 uh, life points. But if he attacks Sangin, that's it. It's game over. Target one face-up card and field destroy it. Oh, he's gonna clear this. You can target one. Oh, that was already activated. So let's see how this works. Again, you attack the Sangin, it's game over. Oh, you stupid! You stupid! He's stupid. He's dumb. Ah! There we go. Finally. <laughs> I'm sorry it took that long, but here it is. Hey, look at that. He was actually uh, like two draws away from the looks of it. Unless there was like spell cards and trap cards in the middle. Although I don't think so, because this is mostly monsters in his deck. Basically, the whole idea with this deck is to use um, the uh, double summons along with the different ah! variety of monsters. And of course, if I can start my hand off with pieces, then it's already a clutch like way to jump into these duels. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do one more duel because I haven't done Duel Links content on the channel so long. We'll make, we'll make this one especially long, uh, longer than usual. And again, uh, if you guys want to see more Duel Links content on the channel, then make sure you leave a like in the comment down below. Number one, let me know how you spell cast or Team Dragon. If you're not even playing, let me know which one, which team you'll choose. And two, uh, like I said, let's go for 2,500 likes and, and yeah. All right, here we go. Final duel. Final duel. And I think uh, Dragon was already winning this too, so that actually works out in my favor. <coughs> see what we got. Let's see how this goes. Let me go ahead and take my sip of water. Are you guys drinking your water? I want you to pause this video right now and go get some water. Stay hydrated. Actually, it's gonna be really goofy to see how this looks. And then, um, with the green screen. Oh! This is what I didn't want to happen! Is this a, a, a grandpa's deck? Oh, it's, it's not a grandpa's deck. Okay, I was about to say, I was like, really? We're playing this game today? Alright, perfect. I got Sangin in the first hand. You wanna always start out with Sangin, because if you got if you get Sangin, then it basically guarantees you to get uh, the head in the beginning. Ooh, and this guy is gonna actually sacrifice. Oh! I didn't realize that with the recent update, they don't show you which cards they are. So it looks like that's the new nerf is basically you restart, but then you don't you don't get your first draw. So like right now they're not gonna get their, they're not gonna get their first draw next turn essentially. So this is the only hand you have to work with for now. Ooh, okay. This is going to be slightly annoying. Yep. Well, as long as I don't attack, I'm good, right? Okay. Let's just play this game. So we're gonna go ahead and set these mostly for to, to psych the, the player out, and let's drop this. Let's get the uh, head first. So if I remember correctly, so I mean I'm not, I'm not attacking. So I don't have, I don't have the worst setup, because all my strategy with this deck is just based around me just not attacking and gathering the pieces. And then there's Amazon's Onslaught, which literally will just um, banish everything. So let's see, you can special summon Amazon Monster. And, well, okay. Okay, this this sucks. This is going to be really, really tricky. Well, lucky for me, he's going to have to attack first, and that's going to kill the monsters. So, like, for example, this, this is going to send into the graveyard, right? There's that. Destroy, destroy target. Or does it still banish? Oh, it still banishes! Dang it! It still does banish. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I do not like this deck. <sighs> oh, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be really, really bad. And the worst part is, is like... Like, watch this, watch this. Let me show you. So, I just summoned a mystery here. That, that sucks a lot. And like, it, it, there's nothing I can really even do here. Like, watch this. Oh no, look at that. Can't destroy it. And then, he's just gonna attack me here in a second and then just banish my stuff. No, just kidding. It already banishes. What do you do? I hate this deck so much. It's fine. You know what? We got two wins in one in one video and then one loss here, so it works out. On top of that, 
because I guess the nature of this duel, I'm gonna get destroyed here in a quick second anyway, so it won't take three years to get through it. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you can still win. Let's see how this works out. Because, I mean, what I could do here is, I'm gonna wall disrupt here. Because, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna wall disrupt here, which is gonna zero out his team. And I have a second one, so when another monster is summoned, worst case scenario, or, yeah, worst case scenario, I could win by just um, doing damage. Great, there goes my second wall of disruption. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right, it's cool. We're doing that? We're playing this game? Not only are you using this deck. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I was like, why are you, why are you attacking me? It's because the effect. What does the effect do? <sighs> you can add one name as well as you gotta. What's the point? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you hoping to accomplish with this? God, I hate this. Oh, that's what. Okay, they're basically just uh, fixing their 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 attack situation. Okay, what am I going to get here? This is not this deck is not equipped for this. I'm gonna set this for for psyching them out, and I'm gonna summon this. I'm gonna go for the attack. I'm I'm gonna go for the damage. Oh, uh, dang it. That's why. Wow, I'm an idiot. I am. An idiot. That's that's the second time I misplayed today. Uh, the first time we didn't actually see it, I accidentally, <laughs> I was about to win a duel, and then I attacked the Dinah, not realizing that, uh, you can only attack Dinah, because again, didn't read the card like I should have. It's not that I didn't know, it's just, I, I wasn't thinking, because it was just a heated moment. But the second time I did that, I should have actually read this one to know what was going to happen. Maybe they might not attack. They might not attack, because they might be afraid of another wall of disruption here, so let's see how this works out. It could work out in my favor here. Although, I wouldn't be opposed if I lose right now, because I don't want this duel to last three hours long. So, what's gonna happen? Gonna go for the battle, pay, battle phase. Okay, they, they went for the attack. They went for your attack, that's fine. What is this? Because I saw it freeze there for a second. Uh, you know what? I think I might just surrender. Because <laughs> Amazon is Onslaught. I do not like that deck. Oh, man. I, okay, I know. I'm actually dead. I'm pretty much dead. I remember the good old days when all you had to worry about was just red eyes, dra red eyes decks and cyber angels, and now it's like you have everything. You have sea stealth. You have let's let's set this. Let's see what I would have drawn next. You have sea stealth, which people don't really use anymore. You had um, you had cyber angels, obviously. Uh, you had sylvans. You know, you now have for hires. So you had onslaught. Although Amazon's decks were always awful as far as like you know uh, what to expect with them. So there's a, there's a lot that this game has now as opposed to back in the day when all you were really just worried about was Cyber Angels. Man, this game has, has come a long way. Okay, that's fine. You know what? We'll end it right here. At least I got my effect here. So let's see what card I would have drawn here. Uh, didn't see what it was. Sangin or Double Summon? I guess Sangin in my hand. Um, and actually, I wonder if we're going to win at the end of this duel here. Because I think we're starting a new group. But I feel like by now the game should be done. Maybe. Still not really sure how the event actually works. I just know that after a certain amount of duels, like three or four, you uh, it adds up the points of, of the teams, and then whoever has the most when they get to like what 40,000, 40, wins. So we might be we might we might have won all our duels. Let's see how it works out. No, we're about halfway. Okay, I'm in the video right here. But again, if you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh duel links, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. In fact, if there's enough support around this video, I will come back in the next couple days and do a Jinzo video because Jinzo is officially out in the game, and uh, maybe. We can have some fun with that as well. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed us today. My name is Ryan Style. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.